We make the strings louder. I went to Lowe's and I was looking at ideas. Uh oh, Jimmy, what were you looking at? I was looking at hard, not hardwood floor, but like floor. No, so what we're gonna do today is Jamie is gonna go. She's gonna ride the dirt bike. I'm gonna no. teach her. Teach. I'm gonna teach you how to ride the dirt bike. Are you ready? For it? Look at the clouds. I don't have a helmet. Looks like they just want to beam somebody up. Isn't that crazy? It's kind of nice. Look at that sky. So what dirt bike do you want to ride? I don't know. Come on. Let's one. let's take a look at them. Let's take a look. If I could give you a ride on mine, okay? And then you could ride the little one. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? No, you'll. I have a helmet. You can wear mine. You ready? Well, I still need to clean up my my mess from fixing your thing because this is two videos in a day, yeah? Mhm. Mm okay, tight. So what is it that you wanted to show me? <laughs> I thought we were gonna go look at the RV. But, well, you wanted to go. But look at I the went RV. to Lowe's and I was just dreaming up some ideas. Okay. Of, of what the RV could look like inside. So Jamie really, really wants I do, I really want to finish the RV. I do. I think it would be... So we're, we're going to go check out the RV. Got it. What? We haven't even been inside of here since you got it, and now we can't even get over there. What is that? Is that like the a weeds. security system you put? Oh, shit. That actually is a good security system. Shit. Wow. That's not no, that's... that's, that's oh, it fell off. Yeah, it just fell off. That's tight. <laughs> Alright, well let me go get the keys. Okay, we're inside. Oh, what it looks like in here. Okay, so we're gonna rip all this up. And do you think that should stay or go? Oh, I think that should go. It that looks too old. It looks old. It does look old. And do like hard, like no, no more carpet. You don't want any carpet? Probably not. What about up here where you're driving at? You need some carpet to yeah, drive. Maybe a little bit, but most, mostly it should just be like hardwood looking stuff. Look at the look at the, my backup camera. You can add a little backsplash. And my Allison control pad. And update these cabinets. Okay, so what do you want to do the cabinets? You want to paint the cabinets. You can paint the cabinets, redo the handles so they're not brass. What about this wall backsplash. right here? What are we gonna do with this wall? What about the, the upper the upper stuff? What are we gonna do with I that? I don't know Just that's... That's Just a leave question it. I don't know the answer to. Jamie installed a freckle on herself. Yeah, that's stained. Get rid of these lights. You don't like the crusty crab? No. Lights? No, I don't. I think they're good. Okay. Blinds. This is like. Cool. It's cool. Yeah. We need to get a chair for it here too. Like. Get rid of that. I don't know. There's there's a lot of potential here. There is so much potential. There yeah. is. But look at all the remodeling you could do. There, well, I this just this is a big this is a big project. Well, yeah, that like you think it's gonna take me a long time to fix the engine in it. I know, it's could be on there. it's oh, a mess. Oh, I bet I bet a damn mouse got in here. Shit. The mattress. Well, maybe that's how it was. Well, no, because it's, it was probably warm in here. So when oh, it it's nice. Cold. It's definitely nice in here. <laughs> here, hold this up. But what I really need to do. What really needs to happen is this. Yeah. I need to fix that some bitch. I haven't even looked at this thing in a while. Honestly, it wouldn't be bad how to how get in here. How do you even get in there? Under there? Back there? No, right here. This is how I'm going to work on it. I have to work on it from in here. From the top? Yeah. Wow. Cool, huh? Yeah, so I need to do an in-frame rebuild on this. It's basically that the... Man, that's, that's heavy. I don't know. That's enough RV for today. I really want to do something with it though. Well, I once I once I get it something. once I get it running. Okay, that's gonna be like. Oh, look at this! We could put put a TV in here. Tight. And then you, if you want to look at me while I'm I'm in the bathroom, you could just you could just watch me. Cause you're sick. But I want it to be soon. Jamie, I got the Supra, the <laughs> Sobs, all the things. Uh, but you imagine touring. I mean, 
I, 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 guess, I guess I should just imagine like touring the country in this thing with a drift car and a baby and a girlfriend, yeah? Yeah, but if I could just work on the inside, but you don't want me to yet. I mean, I guess you could work on it down here. Mm -hmm. You could just come down here. Yeah, I mean, do it. Do what you want to do. But what if, what if I do all kinds of work and then it doesn't, the engine doesn't work? Exactly. I know, but exactly. I guess this will be a good practice one. How about that? I mean, I feel like no matter what, eventually I'll make the engine. Like, if it's broken, I could fix it. You know. There's, what if it's possibly like broken forever? No, it's not. Nothing's broken forever. I could just get a new engine. Okay, so then I could do something with it. If you want. Don't step on the, okay. this security system. Okay. Look what Jamie did. No, she got uh, she got scared. She didn't want to ride it because it has a clutch. I think if it uh, if it was the one that didn't have the clutch on it. I think she'd be okay because you could just like put it in gear and she could twist the throttle. But me and her went and kind of riding around the back of this place, and uh, she basically sat behind behind me, and I let her kind of operate it a little bit and kind of kept my hands, you know, close to it. But so I don't know. Uh, I'd eventually like to get her, uh, you know, riding a dirt bike or four wheeler or something like that, and then uh, I give her a ride on this thing. But so I guess what we're going to talk about today is uh, the drift car, and uh, I guess my plans with this thing as well as the plans with the Mustang. Um, so one of the things I really want to do is wash this thing, but I, I don't know, it's just going to get dusty sitting in here anyhow, so there's no point. Um, it does have a little bit of a leak to it, so if you could see like right there, hopefully my camera doesn't fall, so you can see right there, tip of the, or underneath the coil cover, so I need to figure out exactly what that is, as well as when it's parked in here. This is basically where it was. It sat here for like two nights, and then it kind of left a little, little drippy. So, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this thing on the lift, lift it up in the air, look and see underneath it as far as the, like the oil pans. See if the oil pans leaking, if it's like the oil cooler thing, because I know that kind of had a little bit of a drip on it, as well as figure out the valve cover stuff, or if maybe it's like the VVTI gear or the cam seals, and what that's gonna like give me the opportunity to do is also order stuff for this 2J and David wants to order some stuff from his 2J so basically we're just gonna get huge do like a huge uh, like I don't know like a huge cart on drift motion it's probably gonna be like almost a couple grand in like maintenance parts and random things for it and Dave's ordering like awesome like the it ain't no it ain't gonna be 10 grand no that he was getting like the good ARP head studs, like the real, like the what, the six two five ones or something. The, like, aged ones. Yeah, I guess there's like two versions of ARP head studs. I have a set of ARPs that I'm gonna put in here. Um, I need to do the valve stem seals, like I said in uh, in the little last sob video or whatever. But yeah, when you start this thing up, basically it has like a little puff of smoke, and I feel like I feel like the one J VVTIs don't have that issue, but the two J VVTIs, it seems like. Everyone that I've kind of messed with, when they first start up, they kind of have a little puff of smoke after they've been sitting overnight, um, you know, or two nights or three nights or whatever. So I guess uh, I'm going to quit babbling, get this sob out of the way, get this thing on the lift, and uh, see what we're messing with. Don't hit the S14. guys so this is uh, almost what I expected when I when I pulled this off so you could see right there basically some oil coming out of uh, it almost looks like rubber I don't know that doesn't look good almost in there it looks kind of dusty and dirty too 
But uh, so yeah, when I when I first got this engine, it uh, it actually wasn't bad at all. I mean, when as far as like maintenance stuff, honestly, I, I think I even have the the stock spark plugs in it right now. Um, so yeah, it had NGK wires in it already, and then the timing belt looked basically brand new, which it still looks looks really good. I mean, obviously it's coated in some oil right now. But, uh, so I, I literally, like, I, I have not even had the valve covers off of this engine yet. The only thing I've had is the coil cover off just to look at it. And I was like, oh, timing belt's good, whatever, throw it in. And uh, this is literally the same uh, serpentine belt that came on it from, uh, from Japan too. So yeah, I, uh, I guess what I need to do is go ahead and order from Drift Motion is that VVTi solenoid, uh, not solenoid, VVTi gear rebuild kit. It's pretty simple. We've done it basically on all of the other VVTi's or JZ's. Uh, Jesse's car, we we did it. I've done it on a bunch of the JZ's. It, it's actually not a bad process. Basically, you just pull off these little bolts right there, and then pull it. Oh, and this one, pull this whole cam gear off, and there's basically like an O-ring in there. And uh, just over time, it just gets brittle. And basically, when I last time I did one on a one J, I pulled it out, and you, you could squeeze like. You squeezed it and it's like a piece of ceramic, like it just cracks. Um, same thing with uh, the the seals, like the, the cam seals going into the head. So I'll go ahead and replace the cam seals, the VVTi gear. I'll probably just go ahead and get a new uh, a new serpentine belt. Probably a, uh, I'm not sure if I should just do water pump, timing belt, all that crap while I'm in there. I mean, I, I probably might as well. So I guess I'm gonna do that on this engine. I'm gonna do that on that engine. Uh, Derek, this is his 1J now. But uh, basically, he was going to go ahead and do the timing stuff on it. So I'm basically waiting for him to bring all that stuff over here. We're going to finish putting this thing together, and then he'll kind of take it from there. Or, I mean, it'll be done from there, and he'll just take it and put it in his car. Um, so, yeah, I guess uh, that kind of tells me what I need to know as far as up here. This thing is super dirty, super dusty. Literally, I didn't even put it on the lift before I went to my last event, which was in California at uh, the Sonoma Drift. It's kind of interesting if you just walk around this car, like you could see all the things that... Uh, that I've done with it this season. So I did Lone Star Drift round one last year, uh, Drift Colorado, and I did Vegas Drift too. So that's the Lone Star Drift sticker. This is the Vegas Drift sticker, my number for that, when they did the, the Pro-Am here in Colorado. And then the Drift Colorado series, which obviously I did that whole series and I actually did uh, end up taking home the championship last year. So I got first place in, you know, throughout, I think there was like four or five events through the whole year uh, in the tandem competition. Um, so yeah. I mean, honestly, I, I, I never really expected this engine and the, the whole single turbo stock ECU thing to work th like this well. And I was kind of planning on like upgrading it like almost at the beginning of this season. But I mean, as far as I could tell, everything is like super solid with it. I don't really feel like I need any more power than I already have given the tires that I'm on and like the budget that I want to stick to. So I'm not gonna mess with it. Um, I'm gonna change the oil, do the the seals and stuff like that, we should be good. I do need to raise it up in the air and make sure that there's nothing that, you know, like the oil pan or something's leaking. So I'll um, raise it up, look at that, and then hopefully I don't even have to pull this thing out of here and it just stays in here and it's just good, so. This thing's out here dripping in finesse. Yeah, so I, I kind of feel like we're dealing with something a little bit more, uh, more than maybe just the the front. I mean, I, I do see a lot of crap kind of coming from up in this area. And, you know, obviously it's going to be leaking out of there and then kind of coming back. Um, there is also this thing. I don't really want to, like, pull the oil pan and, like, reseal the oil pan, but there is some stuff back here, too. So that kind of raises concern on whether or not I should actually uh, actually pull it, pull it fully out. Um, I've had the... Basically, so I have the 370Z transmission in here. And I've had that in here for two years and haven't had any issues with it. It's the Collins adapter kit with the twin disc. And uh, I should almost try to see if I could look at the clutch and see how, how it's doing. It's a little inspection hole, but uh, yeah, seriously, like the most basic, simple Jay-Z setup I think you could you could almost have. Um, and it's, uh, it's doing me good. So you guys remember my, my bell housing had a, some, you know, some chunks missing out of it because it ripped out the, the motor mounts for the um, the Z because it was a thing that I parted out. I got the fuel lines routed over here. Um, you can see my rib nuts going through the little floor plan floor, floor plan things. Make sure this thing doesn't have any 
crazy stuff. I mean, everything seems like it's it's doing all right. I mean, I've broken a couple of these. That's about it. You can see I've, I've swapped them off a spare. But other than that, our PBM drop knuckles and uh, dual Z32 calipers, like the Godspeed adjustable arms, a diff that's leaking. So I mean, it's got a couple leaks. Um, we got the BC Racing DS series coilovers that have been awesome to me. Um, what else? That's about it. Got the rack relocated, um, my cut and welded knuckles. We got GK Tech offset strut tower things in the in the front. Um, what else? Got like a big brake kit thing with like an adapter, tranny wiring that's just zip tied out of the way. Coil radiator and uh, basically Mark Ford Supra radiator hose on the bottom. Pretty, uh, pretty simple. I mean, basically we replicated this thing with the um, with the giveaway car, whatever. Straight pipe exhaust, zip tied bumper, street faction bash bar in the rear. I don't know. I'm gonna keep looking and see see any other areas I I think I need to address. So yeah, sorry if it kind of turned into, I guess, a little bit of an overview of my drift car, um, kind of when I was underneath it. But I guess, might as well continue. So it's uh, basically bone stock, 2J VVTi, stock ECU, blah, 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 stock injectors, no standalone, no piggyback, no nothing, no no fuel cut defender, no boost cut defender, no nothing like that. Uh, manual boost controller, uh, $150, like cast manifold T4, and the a legit... Uh, Garrett GTX 3582R with I think a, an 84 um, point 84 AR exhaust housing, uh, Synapse blowoff valve, uh, stock mass airflow sensor, a PBM mid mount intercooler um, that's actually backwards, so this this is bigger than this end. Seems like it, it works, doesn't really matter. Uh, cut kooky headlights, the fake ones just to make it all work. Uh, coil radiator, this thing's been amazing. Triple pass. So basically, I think hot comes out of there and it goes bam, bam, and then goes back in, or hot comes out, and then basically it has to cycle three times um, in front of the radiator. And then these really, really awesome Summit Racing radiator fans, and these things are just baller. They pull a ton of air. And uh, I mean, for, I feel like as hot as this thing should run, it runs pretty cool. Like, it, it does get warm if I do like some hot laps, like a lot of hot laps, like back to back. But I do have a little uh, radiator sprayer hooked up right here and uh, basically like a little pump that I normally throw in the passenger seat and just kind of like pump it up and down like basically like it's like a weed sprayer and uh, kind of did that at a drift event one time because it was getting kind of hot and uh, ended up just well another reason I had like the stock thing back here so I had a bubble in the air system right here so it was getting a little bit warm until I, I changed that heater hose so that that's not the highest point of the system this is the highest point of the system or, or close to it at least um, but yeah so uh, full origin wide body so origin uh, stylish front bumper or I think it's aggressive no I don't know it, it's one of them uh, origin bumper origin 45 mil uh, kooky fenders, uh, side skirts, the I think the Type 2, uh, they're like 55 mil rear overs, and then I forget the exact rear bumper that's on it, but I do have the Origin one up there that's basically painted and ready to go on it. Um, David did end up, he was, he was backing this thing out of the shop one day and backed into something outside, but kind of already had some damage from the Mustang previous in the season. Um, I did repaint this thing at the beginning of last season, and overall, I mean, it stayed pretty clean. Um, if you guys don't remember my little, uh, uh, like revamp, sorry, this door's kind of a pain in the butt. If you guys don't remember what my interior looked like, I got the Street Faction door cards in there, Street Faction, uh, little heel plates, um, little aluminum thing I made myself, Moroso switch panel, uh, ASD Hydro, Street Faction, uh, seat brackets, um, a custom, uh, Hanksville hot rods, a uh, fully tigged roll cage. It's like FD legal. It has the anti-intrusion bars and everything down there. We got my own custom uh, custom wiring right there. That's basically the whole chassis harness and engine and everything all in one. Um, so super simple, pretty, I mean, basic setup. No, none of the factory gauges work, but I got tachometer, uh, oil, water temp, boost, voltage, and then uh, fuel ratio. And that's pretty much, I think, about all you need. Um, yeah, I don't know. I uh, absolutely love this freaking car. It's, uh, I don't know. 
knock on wood, but it, it doesn't give me no shit. And uh, I went through, I don't even know how many LS's in this thing. Um, just like rotating them in and out. Like, you know, something would happen and it would start shedding or, I don't know. I, I, I had, I've had less issues with this Jay-Z than I did LS, but I also did like heads, cam, nitrous, you know, HP tuners, random stuff to the, the other thing on my like kind of ghetto wiring harness until I finally got a wiring specialty harness in it. That is one thing I thought about doing with this was getting away from the OEM harness and actually putting uh, like a wiring specialties harness so I could get the ECU out of the engine bay, clean it up a little bit, make it look a little bit better. Um, I mean, you know, it's kind of one of those things. If it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, I kind of also would almost like to put a, uh, like a GTX 3576R, which that's, or we did a 3076 Gen 2 on the giveaway car. I think this would be really sweet with a 3576 Gen 2, um, or just the 3582 uh, Gen 2. But the, the Gen 2 sound a little bit better, they spool a little bit better, and they make a little bit like more power. And I don't know, they're awesome turbos. And then I could basically put this one on the in the trailer as like a backup just in case anything ever happened. Which I've been going hard on this thing for two seasons and haven't ever had any issues. Like I said, knock on wood. I got the Pro Am kill switch, um, windshield wipers work. I also have the brake booster delete. I did not like uh, left foot braking when I was tandeming with the factory booster because it was super, super inconsistent. So basically, as soon as, as soon as you hit like the left, like as soon as you started left foot braking, it would just like push against you, do some other stuff. So yeah, the other thing I would like to do to this thing is uh, change the hood. So maybe we're gonna see how one I have fits and I'll explain that. So I've had many run-ins basically with uh, not having the hood latched or something stupid happening with the hood pins. And uh, so I think I've smashed three windshields and three hoods on this car total since I've had it, but I've been drifting it for like four years now, or I've, I've actually five years now. So uh, it's been a while and uh, this is a Duraflex hood. One of the things I really, really don't like about it is it just doesn't match the body lines. If anybody's ever wondered why I have a vented hood and I have it also sticking up in the back, is because the hood is almost flat. So the fenders, they have like a nice taper to them and the hood is pretty much flat. So that's the only way I could get even like a halfway, not even okay gap in the front. So that, that's one thing that really, really bugs me about my cars is like the fitment of the front, like up here. It doesn't look bad when it's on track, but I don't know, one of the things that really bugs me um, the giveaway car had a nice origin or like a D-Max hood on it and uh, that thing fit awesome. But I, uh, I have another hood up here. So my buddy, we basically ended up doing some trading and I got this. This is a carbon fiber kooky hood. And uh, so that one fit his car really well but it ended up smashing the hood on his. So the fiberglass on the back is kind of cracked. So I might have to do a little bit of work to it but uh, I would kind of like to put it on here. So that fits a little bit better and kind of matches the curve so I could actually get rid of having the, you know, it, it up in the back. Yeah, one thing you'll notice right off the bat is that this thing actually has a curve to it versus the flat one over there. So you can see how it curves down real nice in the front. Just kind of see it flex a little bit. So yeah, you can see it's cracked right here, cracked right there, cracked right there, cracked right there. Correct right there. So honestly, that's not that big of a deal. I've, I've fixed, I have another, that hood actually right there is the one that's flew up on my car three, like two out of the three times that hood is, has been the one that's blown up and I fixed it both of the times and it was, it was pretty bad. So it seems like the carbon fiber ones, even if you get a cheaper one, they're in better quality than just fiberglass. I don't know, this one's just straight fiberglass. It's heavy, I don't like it, it's ugly. So, and I think the hood pins are actually gonna be in the same spot too, or pretty close to it. So I'm gonna try to pull this thing off and uh, try to stick that one on and see how I like it. All right, so uh, I went ahead, got the hood set on here and uh, had to remove the hood pins. They were kind of in the way. His car was a tube front. So you can see that basically goes to my headlight. So in order for me to make these holes actually work, I would have to do like, make like a bracket and actually put the, the stuff going up front. Yeah, you can see basically right behind the headlight. So, I mean, it's close. I, uh, I could probably just weld something kind of on there. Um, I'm not sure if I, I don't know. I don't know if I really want to do that or not. The other option is, is I could just fill this, put some fiberglass behind there and kind of fill it and smooth it. And then, 
I could leave the center carbon fiber or I could just paint the whole thing. Obviously, since that's kind of messed up right there, it doesn't look the prettiest. And I could do some body work on it and just paint it black like the, the rest of the car or do some sort of like a design on it. I uh, literally, it popped up in my timeline the other day. This car has been painted this same exact like scheme, the, the black, silver, green for five years now, which is crazy. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I've only repainted it once. I've repainted the, the bumpers a couple times, front bumper, front end, hood, all that stuff a couple times. But the only the car's only been repainted once since then. But yeah, I don't know. I definitely, I really dig that uh, that hood gap now. It's kind of crooked right here. If I push that over a little bit, the I have it actually kind of bolted. Not really bolted, but it's kind of loosely set on there. But if I, uh, if I actually hold this down, hold on. if I hold that down, we have a nice even gap, which is uh, pretty much what I wanted. So yeah. Still got to think about that. I uh, I also almost wouldn't would wouldn't mind ordering like a D Max hood, but they're like eight hundred and some bucks plus shipping from Japan, and you got to wait. I do have a guy here in Colorado though. He uh, he got me my Fender's neat garage. He gets stuff for Adam as well, and uh, I got my Origin Fenders from him. And like it was like a week and a half or something straight from Japan. So that was pretty cool. So uh, I, that's pretty much what I'm gonna leave this thing in here with. But uh, let me pull in the Mustang, and we'll talk about drifting. I still think this is so rad with the stupid, like, remote start. I really do love this car. So, uh, so if you guys remember, I mean, obviously most of you guys remember the Mustang. And uh, so the plan initially with it was uh, to be my 2018, like, drift car. But uh, kind of with where I'm at with, with projects and stuff with the Supra, I, uh, I decided I, I, I just want to finish the Supra, get that going, and, uh, and then we'll focus on this thing after that. So I hope to be able to have this thing swapped with a 2J or something, or manual swapped. Still not 100% sure exactly what's the engine, power plant, whatever that's actually going to be powering it. But uh, I definitely would like to be drifting this thing by the end of 2018. So that's kind of the plan. Definitely would like to at least, you know, take it to some some events mid-season and maybe start competing with it by the end of the season. Um, yeah, I just kind of realized that, you know, it would, I would basically have to put pretty much my whole focus onto this car and kind of ignore the Supra. And I don't want to do that. I want to get the Supra done. I want to enjoy that thing this summer, do some cool events with it. So yeah, that's pretty much the plan. Um, as far as going out of state with this thing, I'll probably go to a couple things. I'll probably, I guess, starting out the season, I might go to like Lone Star Drift Round 2, which is in Mineral Wells. I think that's only like 10 hours away from me, so that's not a bad drive. I don't know if I'm going to be doing very many like super far drive, like, you know, 15, 20 hour plus things. I might go to California once. Um, I might do uh, some, you know, maybe one or two more Texas events. And uh, that's about it. Pretty much maybe a Vegas event too. The Lone, I don't know. My, uh, basically my whole idea with drifting is I'm not planning on like getting like a pro license or like a pro two license. I, uh, I pretty much just like driving and I like driving in the pro-am competitions because I like the level of competition. Um, and, uh, I like driving with the guys here in Colorado. So the plan is, is to basically run the full season of drift Colorado, kind of dabble in some of the Vegas pro-am stuff. Um, I know, I think round one of theirs is coming up quick. Um, and that's in Vegas. And I think they only have like three rounds or something. One of them's here in Colorado. So I'll definitely compete in the, the like the Vegas or the Southwest Drift Pro-Am here in Colorado. Um, but other than that, Lone Star Drift, I'm going to be driving the 370Z and a couple of the street legal events. Um, so basically me, Adam, and Taylor are going to be flying in or driving or whatever and, uh, and driving the, the Nissan 370Z in his street legal series to kind of help promote that and to kind of promote uh, people, you know, to quit overbuilding drift cars and stuff. So that's, that's kind of the plan with that thing. And, uh, so yeah, I, uh, that's pretty much all I'm going to do to this thing tonight. And, uh, I got to order some parts for it. And I also got to, uh, I should have just dailyed this thing is instead of messing with the sob, should have put a head, like bought a headlight and I should have just dailyed this thing, which I guess that's still an option. So, uh, again, appreciate you guys watching. Uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying this kind of daily style of vid. Uh, I'm not getting it, uh, as much done, but hopefully they're a little bit shorter. This one probably stretched out a little bit long, so I apologize about that. But uh, yeah, hopefully see you guys tomorrow.